Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 18th, 2021, and this is the week in charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. Glad you guys are finding the show. I've done a really poor job of promoting it and getting the links up, but the good news is if you figure out how to register once, you should be registered forever. DaveLander.com slash webinar, even if the date is old there, should get you registered for all of the shows. And if you check my website on Thursdays, at least on Thursday afternoons, when I remember, I'll put the banner ad up on there. Well, once again, I think the market is the show. I do have a lot to talk about in addition to the market tonight, but I do want to spend some time talking about what I've been seeing in the market, your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks. And then I want to talk more about profit centers. And tonight I'm going to touch upon options, which is a big can of worms, like I said, last week or two. Leverage shares, dance partners, which will make sense in just a minute, and crypto. And I'm probably leaving something out. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as off to sum it up all predictions or about the future. A lot of stuff can happen between now and then. So Linda Rasky, as I said a couple of weeks ago, when she wrote uh, Trading Sardines, or in Trading Sardines, I should say, she said that, I think I have it here. It's uh, it's definitely worth reading. And what I like about it is it's so honest. It's like it's you feel like, hey, Linda, I you know, I'm a your brother from another mother. It's like she talks about her trials and tribulations. It's like, oh man, <laughs> I'll feel your pain. Anyway, she talked about how certain people would approach her and uh talk about things they would do, or even people that were in her office would be trading their own deal and just kind of off the cuff and on the fly and she's like hey why don't we model that out why don't we take a look at that and let's see if it's a potential profit center and we could trade it together now i was trying to come up with a good definition of profit centers and i guess it would be ancillary profitable techniques i guess profitable is the key word in that sentence ideally non-correlated to the core methodology or in non-correlated markets, okay? So before we get into profit centers, keep in mind, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this in a few minutes, but your bread and butter is your core methodology, whatever that is, and that's why I call my trading service the core trading service, but there are other things where you can make a lot of money, especially during specific times. Now, I'm not gonna mention IPOs tonight. IPOs have, haven't been that hot lately. There's been a few here and there. But for a while, IPOs were really hot recently and then and then not so recently. And the only the only co course that's cost me money has been the IPO course, because a few years back, some people took it and they were making so much money in IPOs. They said, well, I don't need this trading service. I'm not going to trade this core methodology. I'm just going to trade IPOs. And that's great. But that's kind of a, a profit center type of thing that doesn't always work. OK. And, and I'm just kind of backing into something here, too. With the profit centers, you don't always want to be trading them all the time like the core methodology. The core methodology, you sort of take the good and the bad, and then we do back off a little bit in less than ideal times. And there's been times when you'll notice there's no setups for days and sometimes weeks at a time. And then all of a sudden, there's a plethora of setups. And as I've said a thousand times, and this has happened more than once, but I could think of one or two in particular where people are like, you know, one guy in particular is like, hey, I'm I'm going to take a break from the service. I'm going to stay subscribed, but I'm going to go off on vacation or whatever because I don't see any setups in the foreseeable future. You haven't shown anything or, for a week or two, and I don't see anything in the foreseeable future. And then that night, there were two really good setups that, that turned out to be two of the biggest winners of the year. Anyway, getting back to profit centers, and I was kind of, I've been searching for a name for these stocks and i was thinking of girlfriends or boyfriends whatever you're into i guess if you're into both as dennis miller says you're a greedy bastard but <laughs> anyway I, I thought about a, a dance partner and it makes a lot of sense when you consider the way greg morris talks about things i think his blog is named dancing with the trend and that's what he wanted to name his book but the publisher talked him out of it or, or put another name on it but that's kind of what you do you kind of dancing with the trend and with these dance partners you have a feel for these stocks and i gave the example last week 
a week before where one client had a really good feel for Boeing during this pandemic when everything was kind of blowing up. And he was able to go in and scalp and scalp and scalp and scalp and make a lot of money very quickly. Unfortunately, with these dance partners, you need a chair ready for when the music stops. And you gotta be careful not to fall in love with the partner. And in one particular case, somebody was having trouble with the core methodology, as I've said before. And you know, now that I know him better, I understand what happened. And I went through all his trades and he was profitable and we weren't having a great period. We were having an okay period at the time, nothing to brag about. But I said, hey, I noticed you've got these 20 day trades in here or 40 day trades or whatever the case may be. And I said, if you take those out, you would actually be profitable over this period of time. You wouldn't print money. It wasn't a print money period, but it was okay period. And you know, the point of the story that, that I often tells is from a psychological standpoint is that he actually knew what he was doing wrong, but it's like he didn't want to admit it because he had kind of fallen in love with that particular stock. Now, coming full circle, the same person was talking with me recently, and I thought he was calling me out, but he wasn't calling me out. It was just, you know, in text, sometimes you lose tonality. And he said something about, well, how much money are you really making in Mara? And so, like, I was a little, I was a little taken back by that. So I went in and actually downloaded it for the year. And I was a little disappointed. It, I was profitable. I'm not going to brag, but it wasn't it wasn't by as much as I thought it was. Okay, now if I could consistently be that profitable, then yeah, that it it truly is a profit center longer term. But it got me thinking about it, and it's like, well, you know, when I made my most money is when I had a feel for crypto because Mara is crypto related. Mara and Riot, I call them the crypto sisters, and I was mostly in sync with those stocks then. And it's like, just like you back off in other markets, maybe back off when things aren't going so well, but don't fall in love with them. So I've actually backed off on Myra recently, right too, especially. And, but last two days I went back in because I saw opportunities and I'll show you those in just one second. But you have to make sure you have a chair when the music stops because sooner or later it will. Just like my friend who was scalping Boeing, in printing money it worked but a lot of times these things work until they don't and you just have to track 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 and track your equity to make sure they're working and make sure they're still working and then make sure if they're as great as you think and and the the realization i've come to recently is maybe myra isn't as great as I thought it was, because maybe I was falling in love with it a little bit too much, and maybe I was overtrading a little bit and I couldn't resist it. So now I'm kind of like, okay, you're still my dance partner, but only when you're looking good, if that makes any sense. The other thing to do is know why they are working. The scalper I was talking about, the person who was doing a lot of scalping, his scalping in general was going for going well for him, and then scalping didn't work so well. Well, as I showed him in the markets, and if you go back to, uh, let's say, about four or five months after March, after everything kind of blew up, the volatility of the market absolutely imploded, and that made scalping much more harder. So know why they are working. And Myra and Riot work well, or have been working well, for me because of crypto, but I can't just go in and willy nilly trade them. Ideally, I want the crypto behind me and possibly crypto making a turn and figure out if one is leading the other or one has a little bit of a leading edge on the other. So I grabbed the last couple of days of trading in Myra, and this is today's, no, this was yesterday's, I think. And I ended up buying it here on a breakout as it's making new highs. And, you know, the old me, until I kind of had that little realization, probably would have tried to bottom fish a little bit on it, which would have worked out well. But a lot of times it doesn't. But anyway, I got long 200s around 38. I flipped out two, two points higher. And then I trailed the stop to the end of the day and exited. And if you add those up, I got 5.2 points on 100 shares, and I've got two points on 100 shares, so that comes to 720. 
Now that's better than a poking iron. That's only that's only 200 shares, and that's a point I wanted to make, or maybe we're kind of backing into. And this is on a hundred thousand dollar account, by the way. So probably risking about 0.4 percent on this particular trade, and you can see it paid off about 0.72. Percent much better than Pocono. If you did that every day, not that you can't, not that you could consistently do that, but let's just for S and Gs, that would be one hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars additional income from the profit center. Now, maybe something a little bit less might be a little bit more reasonable. But if, if, even if you're at a hundred thousand, that's twenty-five thousand. I'm sorry, even if you're at a hundred dollars, that's twenty-five thousand a year. $200 is $50,000 a year. So if you could consistently pull some kind of money out of the market. Now, I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. I don't want to make this sound like income, right? You're still trading and still capital gains. And you're, you're going to have to back off when things aren't going well, because you will get chewed up a little bit with these stocks that you have a feel for, because eventually something's going to change. Crypto in this case is going to get choppy. It's going to be some other reason and some other stock. You know, the vaccine stocks, I know some people that were doing really well with the vaccine stocks and they had a feel for them. And I think that's all changed now. And I doubt that they're doing very well now. Um, as far as like a dance partner, I could think like back in the day, Kevin Haggerty, rest in peace. He he was like in tune with with Agilent and he knew how the market maker, maker operated or whatever. So if you have some sort of feel for a stock for whatever the whatever reason it may be, then by all means go in and take some intraday trades on it. Now, here's today's trades in Myra. A little bit of a breakout after kind of chopping sideways for most of the day. Long 200, once again, out 200 for two points. Trail to stop higher. In this particular case, I got stopped out. And it was what? Two points was $200. And then on the remainder, it was 1.35 points. So that's what? A 135. So 200 plus 135 is 130 is 335. Okay. So that's pretty good money, too. That's. I know it's 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 fuzzy math, and my my wife's always saying, "What's that thing you do?" And I'm like, "Annualize." And she's like, "Yeah, <laughs> you know, because she'll have a good day, and she'll now now she's doing it. You know, I've rubbed off on her, which is pretty scary. But anyway, so three hundred dollars better than the poking eye. That's seventy five grand extra a year if you could consistently do that. And the reason I'm showing you these these small little positions here now, I do take other positions in other accounts, but I want to show you that even with a small position, you could do fairly well now one thing i've been doing lately and and this is a function of the market okay the market appears to be rolling over but it's taking its own sweet time and if you go in and watch the service and go in and look in fact if you're not on the service i'll make the archives available very soon where you can look at all the recent archives and see that there were a plethora of shorts. And somebody pointed out one night, it was like 35 shorts and only two longs or something like that. It was almost like 40 to one, or I guess it would be 40 to two. Anyway, in a market that appears to be rolling over, but not quite rolling over, something like gamma scalping might just work going long against the puts. So let me just, I know I'm opening up a can of worms by talking about this, but I just want to kind of throw it out there. So let's say you're really bearish on a stock. You can go long options on the stock, and I'll show you an example of doing that in just one minute. And you hold the options overnight, and if the stock rallies around your strike, you could buy the stock and look to flip out for an intraday trade. Now, there's a lot of dangers in this, but as I said a second, you want to you're you're generally bearish. But you know that the short is going to likely retrace against you. So you're able to play a long stock position against the options. And the option, the put option, will protect your position. The only problem is you're negating your put option, which is your original position. And you have to be careful not to play both ends against the middle. One way I've been able to do this is maybe only go long half as many 
shares as I have options. That way I still have a bearish position and should my long position get away from me, I'm protected with the puts on that position or puts on that position and I still have more puts that are working. And hopefully that'll make a little sense once we talk about it. Now, ideally you wanna hang on for more than just a scalp. I got kind of cute with the, with the trade I'm gonna show you in, in just a minute. And I thought I'd be able to do it all day. This thing was bouncing around like 1.2 points, 1.2 points, 1.2 points. So I was putting in limit orders to get in right at my strike and then flipping it out for two points. And I did it twice in a row and I thought I'd do it all day and I'd have a great presentation, but it only worked twice. And then finally the market took off and it took off without me. So if you could gamma scalp a few trips or if you can catch a big intraday trend, then you're able to sort of work toward paying for those puts and end it with a free position. The other way, obviously, to pay for the puts would be like come in, you come in and you have a big gap down overnight and you're able to cash out of half of those puts. And I'll show you an example where I cashed out of some puts in just one second. So here's crowd strike and my strike price was 197.50. And here's the actual trades. This was yesterday. And this thing was just all over the place intraday. It, it kind of gapped low and sort of bouncing around. It's all over the place. They had earnings the following uh, the, the prior night. And so I ended up buying options at the strike, like I just said, on limits and then flipping them out two points higher. And I did this twice. And you could see if I did it a third time and didn't use a limit order, it would have been a charm because it ran from 197 all the way up to 211 or thereabouts. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13 points. I could have made 13 points against the options, right? You know, shoulda, coulda, woulda, said no trader ever. And then notice the following day it gap lower again, and it just really began to implode. And that's where maintaining that position via puts comes into place and you're able to hold those puts overnight. Yes, it sucks when it when it goes against you, but if it goes against you during the day, you might be able to gamma scalp a little bit against it. Now, I know this is a little bit more advanced technique, but it's something to kind of think about. Backing up to options, as I said last week, the best thing you could do with options, you know, forget about option models. Everybody in the brother has the models, okay? But the, the bottom line is this, and I was trying to teach somebody options recently, and finally, finally I just said, look, determine where your stop would go, especially like on the put side, on the short side. And if you can get an option for about what you would risk in your stop on the stock, then buy the option as opposed to shorting the stock. A little bit more complicated than that, but if you understand that, you kind of get the idea. So again, determine where your stop should go on the actual stock, then place the price the options to see if there is something worthwhile. For example, suppose you're thinking about trading a stock with a two point stop, and I think the Chewy example is a good example of that. If there are options for around two points, and they were, and you think the stock could easily move enough to make trading an option worthwhile before it expires, then buy the option versus the stock. As I said last week or week before, to trade stock, you just have to get the price right to trade options, all you have to get right is the price, the timing, the magnitude, and in many cases, the volatility. Especially if you're long stock, you need that volatility to stay high. The other thing I mentioned recently, just an FYI, and I do this all the time, and a lot of times I'm shocked, especially on the short side, because on the short side, as you know, the market will spike lower and then come right back up, you know, stop you out or whatever, and then roll right back over again. But let's say you buy options at a dollar, you want to flip out half of those options at two dollars or twice whatever you pay. So what I always do, and it's it's almost a habit now, as soon as I place an option order, as soon as I get a fill, I immediately put in an order to sell half at a double and just forget about it. And every now and then I get a little zing. I'm like, oh God, I just got stopped out of something or something bad happened. And I go over to my screen or I look at my cell phone. And I'm like, oh, I got, I hit that limit order or the stock at the limit order and I was able to get out. And so that's another, another way of free rolling. By the way, that's the secret to trading, establishing free positions. So right now I've got a few free position, free put positions on 
if this market continues to crack, I'm going to make good money on those put positions. If they don't, well, they're free positions anyway. Okay. Now, it's easier said than done, obviously, but you kind of get the idea. Now, somebody said last week, a week before, can you show me an options trade ahead of time? And I didn't, I didn't think about it until after the fact. Sometimes these things happen so quickly, it's hard for me to say, okay, I'm going to go get this option or whatever. It's just kind of like you sort of have to anticipate the rollover. But I did put out a Facebook post within minutes of putting on this trade, and the stock actually retraced a little bit, so you could have actually seen uh, maybe even better prices than what I got on the position. But anyway, there's the actual trades. We'll take a look at that in the chart. This was on the 16th, that was earlier this week. So this Chewy, and this is something that I wanted to talk about, and I'm gonna flesh this out in more detail in upcoming shows, but the Chewy was what I consider a Russian doll trade. And I've got a graphic and all, but it, I didn't get a chance to put it in tonight. I'm gonna talk more about these next week and week after. But in a good momentum market, especially on the upside, and even on the downside like we're in now, but especially on the upside, you look for a daily setup in something like the Landry list, for instance, and that's that's my list of setups that I'm watching every day. And then you look to go in for an intraday trade, and sometimes you can get a head start on a swing trade by doing that. So here we had a bow tie, and we had a little bit of a pullback that were ha that was happening. So I was looking to sell short on the Chewy trade, the Chewy, okay? Now, one thing that I will do when I'm shorting a stock, and the first thing I do is I look at the options to see if I can get an options first, put options versus short stock. But a lot of times, because the way a stock moves, you have to go ahead and take the short setup first and then figure out a way to get into the options, unless you really anticipate the breakdown and, and doing, because the option price is gonna rise, it's a little bit trickier. A lot of times you end up put with puts that, that are worthless or become worthless because the stock never cracks in earnest. But one thing I do like to do is short a stock during the day, and there are the trades again so you can see them, and then immediately look to see if I can get it to some options. And it's a, it's a, I'm, I know I'm trying to, I know I'm being a little risky here, but what I'll do is not only short the stock, but I'll also buy a like amount of options and that way i'm sort of like doubly short so to speak okay and then i also put in that order like i just said to sell half of my options now this where here's where it gets a little tricky and here's where you could open yourself up for potential psychological damage by adding too many decisions in so if you get short the stock and the stock begins going against you you still have that put position on, so you're still technically short, okay? So you can go ahead and scratch out of the trade or get out of the trade at a small loss. But if things work out swimmingly and the stock begins to implode, again, you have like a doubly short position and you're able to ride that stock intraday, okay? Make a little money on the intraday move. And sometimes you get lucky in a case like this. I got lucky, okay? And I was able to sell half the puts at a double okay so you can see sold short and i bought puts right around here all within a few minutes of each other and over the next 15 20 minutes or whatever the stock began to rally a little bit and that's right around the time i was talking about what i did with the position to you guys and then i was able to uh, oh, above that you can see those are the trades minus 200. That's a short, and then plus two, that's long puts at 236. Now here's the thing. As I said earlier, if you're going to short Chewy, it's going to take two or three points at least. Okay. Now here's a short dated option at the money for 2 dollars 36 cents. I know it's got to move a little bit before you get your money back, but I'd rather be short. I'd rather be long a put and go home and sleep at night knowing that I can only lose $2.36. And if something bad happens over the next few days, that $2.36 or $236 per contract could be worth a lot more. And if something bad happens, something good happens for the stock, which would be bad for me, I'm out $236 per contract. Well, I can sleep at night knowing that. And here's the other thing. 
let's say the stock goes straight up and the option is pretty much worthless, I just leave it on the books. And if I come in on Friday, like even on expiration day, these are weekly options, I think, then if the stock gets tank, you know, gets creamed overnight, then I'll make money. Now, of course, I have a lot of options expire worthless. And by the way, this is like a profit center thing. This is like an ancillary thing that I'm doing. Notice that the share size is a fairly small, okay? They're not huge. And it's just something that I'm able to, to do and it doesn't always work, but I'm able to sometimes pull a little money out of the market with a little short-term trading. I'm here anyway. I preach against day trading, but these are intraday trades that take me a few minutes to put on. I'm pretty busy between the market open, first 30, 40 minutes or so. But then after that, I go about my life. Yesterday, even though I had a lot of intraday trades on, I went to, I, I ran errands and with all these things were working. I had limit orders to sell half and I had stop orders, trailing stop orders to keep me in the other half. So this was a, a Russian doll type of trade, meaning that I had the, the longer term time frame working for me, this huge big picture rollover, and then intraday I had a breakdown. So if you can play those intraday breakouts and breakdowns based on the Russian doll thing, where you would maybe get a trigger if you were using a very tight entry on your uh, daily stock position, as opposed to a more liberal entry we use when we're trying to do position trading, okay? If you follow the trading service, you'll notice a lot of times my entries are real liberal in case of a fake out. Well, we're looking to play that first little move on these intraday trades, on these Russian doll trades, because you have the bigger picture behind you. And sometimes that bigger picture kicks in and you're able to get blessed with a nice little profit on an intraday trade. So you can see we covered half, or I covered half here, a couple of points lower, trailed the stop, and then I got out of the rest of the stock at the end of the day. And luckily, the puts, and that's this little uh, zing that I got in the middle of the day, I didn't know what it was. I'm like, what the hell is that? I had to go look it up and see, or look at my phone and forget. And it was the options I had put in an order to sell them at a double. In this case, it looks like a little, is that a double? Yeah, two, yeah, that's a double. And then I exited the rest of the shares market on close, okay? So I kind of doubled up intraday. I know I'm, I know I'm trying to get cute by doing some of this stuff, and I recognize that. But I think my risks are in line in, in doing something like a Russian doll trade because I know the daily's behind me, okay? And I'm able to put these things on. And worst case, I, I scratch out or I have a small loss on the short position. And then I have some options on the books. And I'll live to fight another day if things get kind of ugly. And, and I've also have a position on now that I could hold overnight. So again, if I were to short this stock outright, it would take two to three points. And and at the money, 85 puts that was trading at $2.36, $2.36. I was thinking, and eh, the most I could lose is $2.33.6. The potential gamma is huge. Gamma is rate of change of delta. I know it's kind of a complicated concept, but an at-the-money option has a delta of 50, and that delta can go up quite a bit really fast, and that's the rate of change of gamma. Gamma gets you is an old option seller's saying, okay? You always want to be long gamma, even though nine out of 10 times or I would say nine out of 10 times, many times, if your timing's right, like right now, as the market's rolling over and you've got a lot of gamma on, it's a great place to be. If the market's kind of choppy and you got gamma on, you are likely to lose a lot of money on the gamma. The people who sell the gamma make money, but you can sell gamma, but eventually you'll blow up. You'll have a very brief, but brilliant career. So I short the stock, I put the put options on as soon as possible. And one thing that I've been really cognizant of, cognizant, cognizant of lately is that because I went to place some orders in this account and it says, you're out of money. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. And I was like, oh, well, hang on. I'm short 200 shares of a $200 stock and that's $40,000 margin right there. And, you know, one stock alone. And I think it was uh, another stock was like $50,000 or $60,000. 
So it adds up really, really quickly. But the options, I'm out $500 on something like this, as opposed to what would the margin on Chewy be? $60,000. So you got $500 versus $16,000. So to me, it's kind of a no-brainer. Even though I know that there's a there's a good chance that I'm not going to really get paid huge on these options, but getting paid on occasion makes it all worthwhile. So again. I prefer not to hold these stocks overnight because of the gaps. And you'll see, I think if you go back to the GME one, there was some, not uh, GME, not GME, um, crowd. There was huge gaps overnight. And then of course the trend resumes to the downside. So gaps shake you out, knock you out, you know, margin call. And then all of a sudden it goes right back down. And that's just, that's the short side. That's, it is what it is, you know? So, as I also said a second ago, any option order is immediately followed by a sell order, sell half and a double. And again, that gives me a free position. Now, another profit, profit center, at least recently, has been the leverage shares. But I've I've went through periods with leverage shares and I've gotten chewed up pretty bad. And that's where, again, you have to know when the music stops and you have to know if you're in the right place at the right time. Right now, as you know, I've been a little bearish. And the market really hasn't cracked, but I've been looking, I've been kind of going in, taking little stabs at Lab D and Sox S and things like that. And just kind of to keep me honest and not getting too bearish, I've actually played the long shares a little bit, which are much, with a much smaller size, because the volatility has been good enough for those to work. And, and like I said, I think in last week's show or in the Facebook group, I forget. It's like I'm watching Sox S. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to buy Sox S, but it's going straight down. Going down, going down, going down, going down, going down. It's persisting all day long. And I'm like, hey, well, you know what? I could just be long Sox L. Even though I'm bearish on the semis, try to let myself see both sides of the market and made a little bit on the upside on the Sox L and then a lot when the market finally cracked with the Sox S. And same thing with LabD and lab you but like anything like any other profit center or any other thing that's working you got to make sure you're doing it while it's working and stop when it is not and you can't fall in love with it right now these things are working go in and look at the intraday charts look at the ranges and look at the trends that have been happening so like i said a second ago the inverted shares have looked fantastic to me but the Upside shares have actually been rallying, and I've gone in on a few of those, made a little money until I actually lost money on one of those trades, one or two of those trades, and that it, it bummed me out. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, okay, Dave, we're getting closer to that rollover that you're looking for. So here's a trade from today. So Lab D began to break out in the afternoon with a little bit of vigor and I kind of watched it all day long and I had an order right above the high wherever that order was that you just saw and I rode them for the rest of the day now I was looking to get I think two points out of the trade and I ended up riding the whole position and on average it was 1.28 times 400 that's 514 dollars which is like $125,000 a year if you can do that every day. I know, I know it's once again, I'm annualizing and pipe dreaming, but that's pretty good when you consider this is based on 100K accounts. So that's not bad. So you're making on average 100K. Now, the flip side is also true, and, and I'm guilty of doing this too. It's like, ah, it's $500. Who cares? You know, $500, you know. Well, if you lose $500 a day, that's $125,000 a year. And if you do that across multiple accounts, you know, you're losing millions. So it's it's not a good idea to lose a whole lot. But on the flip side, if you can make fairly consistently a few times a week, 500 a year, 300 there, nickel and diamond a little bit, you'll do just fine longer term. And again, these are ancillary trades. This is not a core trade. I'd much rather just sit in a stock and ride it up 400% or whatever the um it gets bigger every time i talk about it i forget how i don't know how much were we up in the uh, one of them it got whacked today so it won't be as much i think it was 400 percent i'd much rather ride a stock longer term and be a four percent than have to go in every day and work my butt off with these intraday trades 
But if I can come in and like the lab D just have an order in place and, and just go off about my life and get an alert, then that's not too bad of a lifestyle. Now I want to talk about crypto as a potential profit center. And somebody asked me a while back in the group if if my core methodology works in crypto. As we say in Fargo, you betcha. And it works well when, when the markets are trending and they're doing well. And I have an example. I showed an example a while back. When we get to the live charts, I'll see if I can find it for you. But I put it on a post in Facebook. Well, you can just search for it, where I showed a TKO in Bitcoin, and it's set up and, and traded in a fairly textbook kind of manner. So the core methodology does work well. Every now and then you get into RS markets, okay? So post-COVID, as I said, I've been doing a lot of things that I wanted to do for a long time. For instance, I've been wanting to redo this office. I just kind of, I never really got moved in. I'm still not moved in. So boxes and stuff here that need to be sorted through. But I'm going to, build this mother of all trading desk with a, a high-end computer and, and four monitors. And that's gonna be my trading desk and my work is gonna be done on these other two computers that I have, or two, yeah, two computers, two monitors. And anyway, I've got this in video processing and all this other stuff. So I'm working on all these things. And one of the things I've been wanting to do, but haven't gotten around to it was figure out these altcoins, or as a lot of you guys call it, S-H-Y-T coins, shit coins. <laughs> anyway so i sat down one sunday morning figured them out and one of you guys was kind enough to kind of uh, kind of inspire me to do it and i appreciate that and so john z thank you if you're in here tonight and i started i hit it just right and that's a dangerous thing to do i know you got to be careful it's, it's like when people come in like if somebody came in let's say two weeks ago the trading service <laughs> or let's say they came in a little bit earlier than that and all of a sudden they're up 40%, you know, based on like a, a 100K hypothetical account, right? And they're like, man, this is great. You know, the problem is this summer or whenever the market gets choppy again, or like right now doing a rollover where we have to reposition things, they might not think that it's so great. And that's why you kind of got to look at things longer term. And when you hit it, hit it well, you just have to realize that, as we say in the South, the sun doesn't shine on the same dog's ass every day. I saw one of you guys and I, you know, I, I, I ran a count of about 60% and I ran it down most of that. And then now it's going back up again because I hit it just right with the RS game and I was just buying high RS uh, altcoins. And I'll show you that in just one second. And he was saying, yeah, you know, whenever he same exact thing happened to him and he was thinking about going buy a new car, like, you know, with his crypto money. And you know, my advice is go do it and then uh, and then run your account up again. And by the way, one thing I am doing is I am peeling off like those half of those day trade profits and some other profits here and there. And I am putting, putting them in an account that I'm not going to touch because I've got some projects I don't want to do around here based on things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And I think I said a few weeks back, like the backyard, I'm going to put a pool in, I'm going to put in an outdoor kitchen. And I've got some big projects that I'm going to work on out there. But anyway, getting back to the crypto, I just took a snapshot from last night. And this is what I was long last night. And all of these things were doing really well. This BAL, the day before, I think it shot up. But you could see just for the, the day over day change, 22%, 3%, 26%. So quite a few huge moves. Now, this one thing you have to be careful of, you're trading these altcoins is look at this thing, it doubled overnight. And I didn't have an order in to take take profits on that. Now, luckily, I went back and looked at my records and luckily I'd gotten in much, much earlier. And so I ended up stopping out, but I could have had so much more by having a limit order in place. So let's shift gears. Let's go take a look at those altcoins real quick. And then we're gonna come back and take a look at the overall market. Now, by the way, before we get to the altcoins and the market and your your individual stock picks, what I would recommend you do is take a look at the archives of the trading service. And if you go to DaveLander.com slash archives, and I'll update them tomorrow so you'll see some recent things. So you get to see this little rollover that we could be in the midst of. 
And I think that's going to be kind of a, kind of a cool thing. People are like, can I get a trial? It's like, you know, I've tried it before. It's like, you know, okay, here's your trial. It's like, what'd you think? Oh, I didn't get around to looking at it. You know, <laughs> so now you have to pay for it now. That way you're going to be forced to look at it. You got to have a little skin in the game, you know. But the reason I don't give trials in addition to that is that you can go in and look at the last 10 years or so. I know I've had gaps, might even be 20 years, but there's some gaps here there I need to fill in, which, you know, like I said before, I need to get a, a hard drive, hard drives out the garage and, and find a computer that'll still boot them and, and figure out what's what's uh, where. But anyway, go through those archives. It'll give you a good feel for what's going on. And I shorten that URL to just daylander.com slash archives. So goal members, you do have access to the Facebook group. Facebook group is free, but to keep the riffraff out, I'm half kidding, you have to be a gold member. And I promise that I'll make it worth your while. I think everybody here tonight is a gold member. Anyway, lots of stuff behind that firewall there. Not to soft sell you. But it's good stuff. All right, let's take a look at the all coins let me get logged in just give me one second to get logged in and while i'm doing that let's just see let's just see what kind of mood i'm going to be in tonight i'll check my uh positions and i have some links to this um i have some links to trading view and i'll show you where those are and i will also give you i could uh give you my watch list if you want the actual watch list and i just updated it today so let's just click on any one of these and let's go to and let me get let me get the screen set up so i can see what i'm long now i've been super active and, and i haven't i've been keeping everything on a short leash lately because i think we're in a momentum market so let me just show you when you're in a momentum market, what you could do. And this works for stocks too, okay? And again, I'll give you this watch list. I'll give I'll give you everything exactly how exactly as I as I have it set up. The ones that are green, I I'm long or at least was long recently until I maybe I haven't updated everything, but I'll double check them as we go. But you can see BAL up 14%. And we're in an RS market. Again, when I first started doing this, like I said, I got a little full of myself. I was in here all weekend. My, my wife's like, what the hell is he doing in there? You know, <laughs> usually he likes to go in the garage on the weekend. You know, I just was having a blast trading these things. Anyway, so by percent change, you can see basically what you want to do is just stay along the ones that are doing well. Okay, look at that one. Just uh, look at it. Look, look at that trend. It's huge. Okay. I think I have 50,000 or 100,000 of these left. Let's see, quite a bit. But yeah, I was able to cash out of a bunch of these and I just got a, a little tiny position on for S and Gs. Here's another one. You can see it's kind of breaking out in here. This one's doing really well. I'm long that one. And then this one here, I don't know if I'm long this one anymore. I keep them on a really short leash, just FYI. But as we go through these, when you're in a momentum market like we are now, you can play the RS game. And, and I had, I've had clients over the years take the Landry list, FYI, especially when the market is blowing and going and going straight up. And and like one, one person in particular, he had like a little free app from CNBC and he'd put in the Landry list and he would just stay long the top five stocks that were up the most on the Landry list all day. And he said that he was able to get two down payments for two of his investment properties doing that. So relative strength is amazing when it works. When is the key word in that sentence? But you can see like in this one here, KNC, hopefully I took some profits. I need to get better at putting my limit orders in on these things. But you can see it's going straight up, but then it's kind of died out a little bit. And that's how these things are. They're really spiky and they're kind of wild and crazy. This one's kind of stalling out a little bit. I think I've already, no, I still have a position here, but this is, what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually exit this probably after the show, I'll go ahead and get out of this particular position because it's not actually working. That's when you're trading an RS market. When we get to Bitcoin in a second, I'll show you how to trade in a more normal market or the core methodology. 
This might be a good example for core methodology. You see things going straight up, it's pulled back. Look to play like the pullback in here, have a profit target up here somewhere, and then trail your stop higher. Once this RRS market dies out, I'm gonna go back to just trading the core methodology applied to crypto. Let's just see if there's a few more in here. And then I wanna show you Bitcoin, talk about that. Now see, here's one that's more of like a core methodology. Look back here, you can see nice accelerated move higher, nice little deep pullback. I mean, that's almost textbook in nature. And I'm not familiar with this package enough to throw in a moving average on the fly. But if you go to Stock Charts ACP platform, they don't have all these altcoins yet. I'm really on them to get them. But this is the best platform, at least for the altcoins at this particular point in time. Once Stock Charts catches up to the altcoins, I'll be happy to use uh, Stock Charts once again for that. And let's just go through a few more of these. Okay, here's Bitcoin. Now, remember what I said earlier? And I forget exactly where it was, but somewhere back here, it pulled back to a 30 day moving average, took off, it pulled back again. And look how textbook this pullback is. Nice accelerated uptrend, nice deep pullback. Look at this, uh, these funny looking charts. I don't know what these charts are, they're funny looking, but you could see this funny looking chart triggers here and then runs up nicely, okay? So that's Bitcoin and the core methodology. Sure, it works there, but look, if this thing is, let's see if I can go back in time. If this thing is chopping around and going sideways, you don't do anything, okay? So this profit center, it's okay for a profit center to go dormant for a while, okay? If you wanna, for lack of a better term, just don't do anything when these markets aren't moving. And no, don't get too attached. Don't get too full of yourself, okay? If you're in a runaway RS market in crypto or anything else for that matter, then enjoy it while it lasts. But again, have a chair for when the when the music stops. That is another one that I've been long for a while. And I simply just bought this thing while it was going straight up. And you know what? I trust these things about as far as I could throw them. They're probably all BS, you know? It, it, a while back, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. Bitcoin was like at 4,000 or 5,000 back then. And every day he put out a he put out a newsletter. Ooh, it's all crap. This Bitcoin is crap. It's crap. It's crap. And blah, 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 blah. You suckers out there buying this. It's like, okay, I hear you and you're probably right. But so what? Who gives a flying flip, right? If it's going up and you can make money on it, then by all means. Now, keep in mind, I'm not that in the form. And like one thing I wanted to point out earlier, we just kind of ran out of time here. And as I flesh out these profit centers, I'm going to backtrack and, and talk about more of these things. But one thing I want to point out is you got to be careful that these shiny objects, OK, especially like crypto right now, doesn't detract, doesn't deter you. What's the word I'm looking for? You got to make sure that it, that the shiny object here doesn't take you away from your core methodology, you know, and sometimes I'm looking at all these Bitcoins and having all this or all these cryptos and having all this fun. And I might miss a signal with my core methodology. So it's like shame. So you got to be careful with all this stuff and you could end up chasing your own tail if you're not careful. But I think there's a golden opportunity here. There are golden opportunities that will come in go and in plenty of other markets and then even within the stock market remember the what do you call those things spocks special purpose acquisition companies those dumb things right they're dumb they're dumb they're stupid but so what we made a lot of money in them and i know a lot of people who did a lot of day trading in them and did made a a, a real lot of money in them a whole lot of money all right let's shift gears any any questions anything so far i know i'm throwing a lot out there tonight Let's uh, shift gears and take a look at the market. And I wonder if I still have it. You know what? Let me do something real quick here. I wanted to show the stock charts people about listening to the database. So that was a, sh a potential short a few days back on Monday, at least. That was a potential short on Monday. This was a potential long. Okay. Here's a potential short. Now this one's all over the place, no longer set up, but it was a short that went up, so nothing there. Here's another short. So you can see the database had a plethora of shorts in here, 
And for a few days earlier this week, they went up. But now a lot of these are beginning to crack. I'm short uh, Chewy, I'm short Crowd, or have puts, I should say, on some of these positions. So when I talk about the database speaking and the importance of listening, and this, this presentation will be out tomorrow morning at some point in time, you can see that there were just a, a plethora of shorts and only one or two longs out of all these stocks. And this is why I've been a little bearish lately. And I actually put out a post, I'm bearish, y'all. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I mean by the database speaking. Just I'm also, I have, uh, this is in the service and I have puts on this one, FYI, PDD. Okay, so let's shift gears. Let's get to the overall market. So in addition to all of those stocks that are setting up lately on the short side 35 to 1 or 30 40 to 2 or whatever it was there's been a few sectors that have been really questionable now take a look at the peas you can see the peas gap lower today tried to rally but then came back in and now they're back below where they broke where they broke out now it's not the end of the world we're i'm not getting any longer term timing signals Let's take a look at the bow tie moving averages. And believe it or not, they're still in uptrend proper water. So if I was just looking at the S&P 500, I'd say, well, let's, let's be a little careful in here. But for the most part, things are looking pretty good. Let's just stay long. And, you know, let's not mess around with the short side. NASDAQ, a little bit different story, okay? It's down below its moving averages again. And as I've been saying quite a bit, this market could retrace quite a bit. For me to get excited on NASDAQ, I would actually almost have to go back to new highs. In fact, anything short of new highs, I would remain concerned about the NASDAQ. Now, keep in mind, it's a one day at a time environment. It's always one day at a time as I preach. And keep in mind that the market could do some faking out and go straight back up and then roll over. You know, the short side is really tough. When we get to retail, I think that's a good example of that. Rusty got whacked a little bit. Rusty had been doing really well. All-time highs earlier this week, or late last week, I should say. And then today, it got whacked 3%. Now, here's what kind of began to, to put a shot across the bow of the market. You had energies and conglomerates and durables and non-durables, transports, and quite a few other areas, material construction. We'll look at some of these that were doing really well. And then my bearishness or at least selective bearishness was on the fact that the semis were beginning to tank i was getting a plethora of semis setting up biotech drugs technology in general crowd strike i have puts on uh like i said shoe have puts on pdd i puts on so i've got a lot of puts on the market doesn't tank tomorrow i'm going to be a sad puppy <laughs> not that i wanted to tank for those who are long but at least certain specific stocks Metals and mining has been doing really well, just kind of pulling back in here a little bit, consolidating, but you can see moving average still enough trend proper water. And like I've been saying, like I said a minute ago, conglomerates, durables, non-durables, quite a few of these areas kind of hanging in there. Banks actually hit new highs today. Insurance have been has been hanging in there. But take a look at drugs. Okay, we had a bow tie here, sold off hard, retraced. Now it looks like they're trying to make a new leg lower. Ditto for biotech, first thrust down, bow tie. Looks like it's getting ready to make a new leg lower. Health services kind of looks like a big picture top. Manufacturing still doing pretty good. So there's definitely a dichotomy out there with these sectors. MNC, today notwithstanding, has been doing really well. We're long an MNC stock. We're long a retail stock. We're long a few other ones, uh, metals stock and an energy stock, and looking to get long some more energy. But take a look at like retail, okay? And as I said in yesterday's show which will be on my website tomorrow and if you go to my youtube channel you could get it maybe sooner youtube slash c slash dave landry and look for the videos i liked i tend to like all my stock charts videos so it'll play on my channel but anyway retail nice little sell-off out of first thrust almost a textbook bow tie off of all-time highs by the way somebody was asking about bow ties about about some stocks that went in range and yeah that the, mo the moving averages may have crossed over but you don't want to trade a bow tie on a stock at a range, you want a stock coming off of all time highs, ideally, or major, major, major lows, like all service stocks might go down and make a 10 year low. Those are the best. And, and as somebody pointed out, was kind of pointed out in a group, going to look like CPE, I think was one of those that bow tied at seven. 
and then now it's in 20 something or 30 something. It might not be there anymore after today, but it ran up from that low, low level. It's kind of a textbook type of example. Anyway, this is a this is a poster child for the short side. Okay, you get short, you feel great. And then the market goes straight back up, shakes you out. And then what's the next thing it does? It goes straight back down. And that's why I'm okay with, with holding puts, even though buying options does have a lot of issues in and of itself. Transports hit new highs today, backed off a little bit. So far, though, they still look pretty darn good. Let's take a look at the semis, though. Back to the downside. I've been bearish on the semis for a week or so. And what have the semis done? They've gone up. Like I said earlier, Linda Rasky once said the market will do the most obvious thing in the most unobvious manner. If it's going to roll over, it's going to have a big rally first, usually, okay, to fake everybody out. And, you know, that's sometimes when your best trades will come from when the market does do a little bit of that faking out and you're in there. Maybe take a stab on the short side, get your butt handed to you, and then, but just keep looking at the charts. And when it does begin to crack again, just be ready and go with it. Okay. Let's just take a look at bonds real quick, and then we'll pop out. We'll start looking at individual stocks. Bonds hit uh, new lows today, new multi-year lows. Bonds down, rates up, okay? So not so good. You know, everybody's talking about lumber prices going to go up forever. Somebody somebody recently said, oh, lumber prices, they're going to go up forever. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to get into an argument, but I'm like, uh, no, they won't, Donnie. <laughs> no, wait, I could do that better. Let me see. No, you don't, Donnie. <laughs> All right, uh, individual stock questions. And I'm, I, my apologies, I was so busy rambling. Are the Russian doll setups as effective as ogres? Well, it depends. You know, it's like uh, somebody in the Facebook group was new to my methodology, was asking how reliable bow ties. Well, if you took every bow tie out there, you probably would lose your butt, okay? If you took every ogre out there, you probably would you lose your butt okay so there's something you have to you have to pick the best and leave the rest so for bow ties for instance like i just said you want all-time highs uh let's take a look at some of the things that i'm short so to speak c r w d like take a look at crowdstrike okay and you're a bit of a pioneer with some of these things but look you want all-time highs okay you want a big thrust lower you want a nice tight bow tie to me this looks like a good a good sell signal here okay so i think this is a fantastic looking setup i would i would cash in your grandkids or your kids college funds and put all the money you know short just put all the money and short this thing just buy as many puts as you can <laughs> obviously i'm kidding so i don't think it, i think they're two different things and i'm glad you brought up over the guy reversals because i need to make sure i've got a not an or not an article but i'm working on like a manual for all these profit centers and i need to uh look at that next time I do my next show. But I wanted to get crypto out tonight because it was relevant. I wanted to get the puts out tonight, a little bit of that gamma scalping because everything is relevant to what I'm doing. And, and what I'm doing now, since I started talking about profit centers, is I'm very cognizant of my trading. And if I can grab you examples that are pretty fresh, less than a day or two old, I think that's pretty meaningful. And especially if next week, after talking about gamma scalping, and buying short dated puts for gamma plays if if i can pull off a couple of those next week then you might say aha i see what he's saying now and it makes sense but anyway over to gap reversals i haven't really made much money on them lately i played ois and i made like 50 bucks or something like that in that one but you have to pick the best on the ogres so two completely different things uh, ogre would be more of a profit center type of thing, but not every day, okay? And here's the thing, and it's a big if. If I wait and wait and wait and ignore any ogre that this just doesn't jump out at me like I have to trade it, okay? I'll do really, really well. But a lot of times I'll find myself getting bored or whatever or getting tired of waiting, and I'll jump in on a couple of mediocre ones and get my ass handed to me. So you want to make sure you pick the best when it comes to opening gap reversals. And it's a little bit different. Usually like big cap stocks can work really well, especially if they're trending really well and you have that gap lower because institutions are looking to possibly come in and buy some shares, maybe to window dress, and they want to get those shares as low as they can. 
and also the market makers tend to pull it down more. So you say, oh, the Russia doll setups. Um, it depends, okay? If you've got a really good looking setup to begin with on a daily chart, then you can go in and make that intraday chart. I would say they're, they're probably one in the same. Thank you, Laurent. Laurent says, I hope the refurb is going well. It's going slow because I'm having to do a lot of engineering, but that's fun. I, I enjoy doing that. I like problem solving, figuring things out, ordering a lot of crap on Amazon. <laughs> I got a vacuum chamber coming in tomorrow so I can infuse some wood with some resin and I got all kinds of crazy shit going on. All right, uh, Chris, let's take a look at PZZA, PZZA as a short, okay? Interesting. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good looking short. Uh, it's still at high enough levels to make it worth shorting. The first thing I say when it comes to shorts is, uh, you know, you want to try to catch them as high as possible, okay? Something like this, kind of an inverted cup and handle looking thing, bow tie or whatever. The PZZA still looks pretty good, still at pretty high levels, okay? The volume isn't tremendous, but a half a million shares at an 80-something dollar stock, you could probably get some shares off. So I, I, I think that one's okay. I think there's some other stocks out there that could be a little higher and could, could be on the cusp of breaking down, but I have to say good eye on that one, Chris. MTDR. Yeah, I like this one. Uh, this should be an Landry list for today. If it's not, it it's something that uh, I don't think I would have called it out. It could use a tiny bit more pullback, but it did pull back to the 30. So it's a Landry light pullback. I'll give you a high five on that one, Chris. That's that's pretty good looking. I'd actually like a tiny bit more pullback, and I hope it's on tonight. If it's not on tonight's Landry list. The only reason it might not be is because it could use a little bit more pullback, but yeah, good eye on that one. All right, Zach says, PLTM, PLTM, caught my eye at first, but can't seem to get past the deceleration thought. Well, there are so many other ETFs that, that might be worthwhile right now. This is platinum, I think. I, I wouldn't... It's tough to trade a metal, okay? So it's, it's yeah, Chris, you had, that's okay, no problem. You have me stress it out. See, see, that's why every night I'm going through 2,000 stocks, and there are nights when I was like, you know, I just, oh, God, I don't feel like going through all these stocks. I'm done, you know? And I'm like, no, if I don't find every viable stock, and if I don't have an excuse for every viable stock, and one of my clients finds it, you know, it's like I know, it's like I'm under that pressure every night, so. Thank you. I'm glad it's on the list. And it's I, like I I I knew I had the list was much much bigger tonight than it was, and then I and then I squished it down. George, uh, that one is on the Landry list, and I'm going to give you a high five on that one. And I actually I actually was looking to play a Russian doll on that one. Okay, and for those who are on the service, it starts with P and ends with P. That should give you a pretty good hint. Okay. Yeah, uh, Zach, getting back to this, uh, you know, forget about this because it's it's platinum. Look, if you want to do ETFs, do like some sort of, um, you know, take a look at like energy ETFs, like the alternative. We talked about this one a while back. We talked about TAN, you know, just find something a little bit more like the, the energy ETFs, like the, the new energy ETFs, such as this. And then even better on the upside, if you want to buy something versus short, um, I took them all out the lander list tonight, but there were a bunch of energy related ETFs. Let's see if I can just catch one on a fly. Can anybody think of one? Um, XLE, that'd be a good one. Okay. So take a look at XLE. Okay. This would be a much better, less efficient market than that the platinum things as a short okay so i would much rather go along this you've got a pullback landry light pullback almost to the 30 ema okay that looks pretty darn good i would i would go along that before i would short the platinum okay thank you george appreciate it chris says neo short i'm probably going to say yes absolutely and again you know breaking down from high levels no support for quite a while there might be something that can crack a little harder and a little faster. Maybe the one that I have is recommended uh, tonight as a short that's also in health services, starts with G. 
ends in H. That, that should give you a hint. But yeah, that looks good. You know, you got a bow tie, you got a big thrust down, you got a pullback. That's a stock that looks like it's in a lot of trouble. You got a ton of overhead supply too. So if you short this thing, it really shouldn't push much. It shouldn't push into the high 50s, you know, stop somewhere around 58 or so. That's where you're going to be wrong. And it, and a lot of people are like, where where exactly place your stop? It's like, I don't know. You have to you have to work with it. I was, I was in a meeting with the Italians yesterday and uh, some new Italians, and they want me to do a presentation, a couple of presentations. And it's like they, they wanted some exacts on things. And I'm like, no, I just can't really give you an exact on things because it depends. But if you use a little common sense, you can see all this overhead supply, a stop somewhere above or around this overhead supply should be adequate, okay? Well, Zach, you want to buy platinum? I wouldn't I wouldn't buy it. The metals aren't really doing so hot. The, the precious metals, metals and mining are doing doing well. But you could see silver's not doing too much in here. You know, uh, gold is headed lower. So, okay, any more questions? Any more stock picks? Going once, going twice. Well, as usual, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Any unanswered questions? Well, just bring them up to the Facebook group. We'll take care of them there. If you're not a member, a gold member or a service member, then you can reach me at davelander.com slash contact. We don't talk for you now and then. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Mark.